Hello everyone, today we're working on a beautiful Onam special terracotta jhumka. I've named this Mail because of the beautiful, gorgeous blue color that I'm going to be using to paint this particular pair of jhumka. It's, um, so for those of you who do not know, Mail means peacock in uh, Malayalam. So to start off with, this is an oil lined jhumka. I dropped in a small ball of clay, cut off the excess using my fettling knife. And this is for the stud part, so I have a nice, cute, round uh, dome shape ready. I smoothen this and with the help of a nozzle I add uh, small circular designs uh, that look like a little flower. This is a connector bead. The connector bead is a round clay bead with two nichrome wire U-pins in this manner. And I just connect this to the uh, stud. So you can see that the connector bead is bone dry and it's always easier to work uh, uh, when it's bone dry because um, you know it's not going to get disfigured when you're trying to put two pieces together. Now for the conical jhumka part, again an oil lined uh, jhumka mold. This is only for the size reference. Like I said, I'm working on a conical jhumka part, so obviously, uh, you know, the dome wouldn't help. Just make it into a round ball, and with the help of my thumb, index finger, and middle finger, I'm going to be pressing down on this ball of clay. So I'm just going to be pressing down, rotating it, pressing down, rotating. So I think this angle probably shows the process a lot more uh, clearly. So as I keep doing it, there is a conical shape that gets formed and um, once I have arrived at this particular shape, I can begin smoothening it. I used a little bit of water as well as oil because I did see a couple of uh, superficial cracks on the surface of, uh, of the jhumka. So using a ribbon tool, I scoop off the excess clay. This is a necessary step, it just makes the jhumka a lot more uh, comfortable to wear, lighter in weight as well. So um, this is definitely a step that I wouldn't skip, especially for a jhumka this size. It's not very big, but it still has excess clay and uh, it just makes, uh, makes it a lot more easier to uh, remove it, uh, you know, remove the excess clay. So now that I see that the, um, you know, the, the dome is up, rather the conical shape is formed using my fettling knife I start designing the jhumka. I'm mainly using just my fettling knife and a nozzle to design this so even if you are somebody who is uh, new at making jhumkas uh, you know you can for sure you can try and attempt something similar um, if not the same thing. I'm using a nozzle for tiny circular designs. If you don't have a nozzle, you can always use a ballpoint pen refill. And um, I have a video on how you can actually get multiple sized circles with just a ballpoint pen refill. I'll try and link that. It's, it's I would say uh, that video is like maybe two years, oh, maybe maybe about two two years old I guess so um, I'll try and leave that link in the description box as well please do take a look at it now that the designing part is done it's time for the stick beads I do leave a nails gap between each of the stick beads um, purely because the stick beads are bone dry but the um, the top part of the uh, the conical shape is still um, wet so on drying when it shrinks it will automatically bring the stick beads closer to each other and I connect in this manner for, for connecting all the all of the u pins that i've used in this particular jhumka are gauge 26 and there you go the beautiful pair of jhumkas are ready really cute ones and quite light in fact it gets even lighter uh, post firing so i let this dry um, and then it's fired in an electric kiln and after it's fired we can begin painting There 
you go the jhumkas are um, you know beautifully fired and a lot lot lighter it's really light and if you see the jhumkas are not really very big or they're not very small either but they're just they're just apt and very comfortable to wear so with regard to the paints i'm using uh, uh, the dark blue gold and peacock pearl and uh, these are just the two brushes that i'm going to be using I've already laid out the colors in the palette. I'm using two kinds of blue because like I said I'm actually wanting to um you know arrive at a nice beautiful peacock blue. The peacock pearl on its own is a color which uh, well I don't like that much <laughs> because it's just too metallic for my taste. It's too shiny for my taste. Um so just mixing the dark blue along with uh the um peacock pearl um just it makes a lot of difference and uh, you'll see how beautiful the color really looks by the way i am actually working um, so this this part the painting part uh, was taken at uh, about 11 o'clock at night so uh, i do have like two light sources um, you know i'm just working with two light sources uh, so there's a slight difference in the color but uh, yeah so if you see the connector bead and the uh, stick beads are in gold and uh, everything else is in this beautiful vibrant blue there you go the uh, base is ready and uh, for the designing part now again this is just my liner brush i use the liner brush even to paint uh, the gold on the stick bead as well as the connector bead the um end of the video i have actually taken the um photographs of the finished uh, piece like i always do and um i usually take that in natural light and you'll see how gorgeous this color really is There you go. The painting of this jhumka is done. So we let this dry, and um, after this is completely dry, oh, it looks beautiful. So uh, after this is completely dried, we uh, varnish, and I use the ultra matte uh, varnish. So um, you know, I I just like I I just like this so much better than the glossy or the satin. uh varnish so um this definitely takes time um so what i typically do is um you know paint or rather varnish the stud part let that dry then um go on to doing the back of the stud again let that dry then do the connector bead i i also use uh you know uh the help of a fan 
um, just to speed in the process up a little bit so anyways now that you see the varnish is also completely dry and it's time to attach the stud posts so I use these uh, I use E6000 to attach the stud posts Once I attach it, uh, to make sure that it's really well um, sealed, I just use this kind of a nozzle uh, just to press it down because I obviously can't press down with the help of my fingers on the stud post because it can really hurt. So um, that's something that you, know, you can try if um, you know, I think it's I think it's a necessary step to try and push the stud post as much as possible. And uh, there you go. Like I said, natural light and you see how beautiful the color really is and the ultra matte um, varnish is magic for me. I, I've, I really enjoy uh, you know working with that. So I really hope you all enjoyed watching the video. Please share, um, subscribe to our channel, like the video. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for watching.